We are finally settled into the midpoint of patch 10.1, and there's been surprises that nobody saw coming. We're gonna be going over the best champions in every role so far this patch. Slap that like button, ring that bell, and let's jump right in. We're gonna start by running it down mid with our first pick, Diana. She's come as a bit of a surprise with all the changes to her kit, but she's settled in quite nicely as one of the best mid laners on the patch. If you're going to be playing her, you're going to want to take Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Shield Bash, and Second Wind. This will help you get through that rough early game where she doesn't have mobility or range to deal with a lot of other mid laners. Speaking of range, don't forget that Diana's E resets when she hits a target that she queued. This can let you get a double dash towards enemies who are playing really far away from you. Next on our mid lane list is Fizz, and this shouldn't come as a surprise, considering that a lot of the champions on our list right now are melee. Fizz excels at fighting other melee fighters. When you're playing Fizz, you're going to want Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Tenacity. One of Fizz's main weaknesses was his high mana cost, due to his E costing so much of his pool and being his main damage and escape tool. With the new Presence of Mind, Fizz has been surging in win rate. Following Fizz is going to be Cassidy. With a couple of AP Assassins doing really well this patch, Cassidy being a big threat should not come as a surprise. You're going to want to run Fleet Footwork, Triumph, Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. This will let you do really well in the early game with some extra sustain to help you out. Remember to only look for trades when your Q is up, especially if you're fighting against another magic damage dealer in the mid lane. Oh yeah, and if the enemy team doesn't really have a threat on you, then forget Triumph. Just take presence of mind for those Casa win moments. The mana increase and restoration makes for some absolutely disgusting late game plays. Speaking of AP Assassins, we're not done yet, because next up on our list is Katarina. The Conqueror changes have really put in some work for her. So, you're gonna want to take Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. Katarina spikes really, really hard at levels 3 and 6, and even more so when she gets Gunblade. You're gonna want to look for those moments to start making your plays. Even though she relies on her abilities, don't forget that your E actually is an auto attack reset. You can use this to your advantage greatly considering that you can reset it up to two times. With all these flashy and dashy assassins around, there's gonna be one champion to just rule them all. Cassiopeia. Between all of the past four champions, they have multiple mobility spells, and Cassiopeia can just shut that down immediately. With Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Tenacity, Last Stand, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter, you've got all the tools that you need to deal with those pesky assassins in the early game. Cassiopeia already has really good healing when hitting targets with her E as long as they're poisoned. With even more healing out of Conqueror and more on top of that from Ravenous Hunter, she's an absolute healing machine and can easily 1v1 a bunch of the assassins that we just mentioned. To learn how to play as or how to play against the champions that we just mentioned, make sure that you go check out our website GameLeap.com. We have tons of guides covering generic skills all the way down to champion specific guides. Everything that we put out is made by challenger level players and we're always listening to hear what you guys want to see next, so make sure to let us know in the comments below. Now let's take a ride to the island of top lane, and our first champ up is Mordekaiser, and this should come as no surprise. There was actually a ton of doubt about Mordekaiser considering the nerfs that he had, but turns out that the nerfs just aren't enough and he's still trucking well above a 50% win rate. You're still going to want Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter on him. Consider switching to Legend Tenacity though if you notice that the enemy team has a lot of CC. The attack speed just isn't worth it over the free tenacity that you can get. Remember that Mordekaiser is almost impossible to gank. Whenever somebody else shows up, you can just hit R and have a nice 1v1. Dunking his way into our next spot is Darius. Darius excels in long drawn out fights, so it's no surprise that he's doing really well right now. When playing Darius, you're going to want Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Demolish, and Second Wind. The alacrity for the attack speed might seem really tempting, but Darius has a lot of trouble as a juggernaut getting into fights and even getting out of them. Once you're in the fight though, he can absolutely dominate a team fight. Make sure that you get those blade edge cues as that healing and extra damage makes a huge difference. I hope you enjoy dunking because our next champion is Alawi. Just like the last two, she has some pretty good sustain and a ton of damage. Almost all of laning phase revolves around you landing your E on the enemy. That spirit pole is seriously powerful. You're gonna want Conqueror, 
Presence of Mind, Tenacity, Last Stand, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. That new Presence of Mind really helps out Alawi a lot, as she can have tons of mana problems. And you might be seeing a little bit of a pattern here, but with Conqueror, Ravenous Hunter, and the items that she builds, she's got a ton of healing. Since a lot of top laners right now have healing, Kled is our next pick. With his built-in Grievous Wounds on his Q, he actually does quite well against several of the best top laners right now. He also boasts similar damage and a decent amount of healing. When you take Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. Remember that early on in lane when you level up, you don't have to put a point into your W right away. You can save it, activate your W, and then have those 4 quick attacks for when you need them the most. Rounding out our top lane picks is Orn. He's the one odd man out on our top lane list here, as he is the only real tank. Right now, Orn actually has quite a surprising amount of damage built into his Brittle procs. Because of this, he can go toe to toe with a lot of the other laners that we've mentioned. For Orn, you're going to want to take Grasp, Demolish, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Perfect Timing, and Biscuits. Don't forget to use the slow from your Q to set up your W, as even just breathing on your opponent without proccing the Brittle actually does quite a bit of damage. Short, quick trades to whittle down your opponents are your friend. Speaking of friends, let's talk about everybody's friends, the junglers! A lot of people seem to think otherwise, but right now, Echo is one of the top junglers on the patch. What has changed about Echo though, is his runes. You're going to want to take Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. A mistake to avoid when playing Echo is starting with your Q. Starting W is almost always better than starting Q. This will help you get healthier clears. When ganking or fighting, Try to cast your W when you're outside of the enemy vision. Your W won't show up for them until the last second. Next up, we've got Olaf, who's been a very convincing jungle pick for quite some time now. Patch 10.1 has him still as strong as ever. You're going to want to take Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and the big one, Approach Velocity. Taking Approach Velocity allows Olaf to have a really, really great time in a ton of extended fights. You can easily chase down enemies and make it so that they can't escape. Even if you aren't the one doing the killing every single time, those chain slows from the axes are going to make it so that your opponents cannot run away from a fight. Speaking of not being able to run away from a fight, we have Jarvan. Jarvan has actually been a pretty standard jungler for quite some time, and his power hasn't gone down at all. The lockdown from his ultimate does really well against a bunch of top tier picks, including other junglers like Olaf. You're going to want to take Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. Always remember that when ganking, you don't want to use your EQ right away. You want to close the distance with your opponents first, force them to flash with your damage, and then follow them with an EQ if possible. Sometimes it just doesn't work out though, so don't try and force this type of play every single time. Snowballing his way into every lane at just the perfect time is Nunu. Nunu can clear really well and really healthily, and this is even more important in Season 10 where the camp respawn timers are even lower. Not only that, but he also offers supreme objective control with his Q true damage. Couple that with his healing and slows, and this lets him contest other junglers like Olaf really well. You're going to want to take Aftershock, Demolish, Conditioning, Revitalize, Cheap Shot, and Ravenous Hunter. This lets you exaggerate Nunu's already great strength in ganking and healing. Rounding out our junglers is Zac. Zac is another tank who can clear really quickly and takes advantage of those lower camp respawns. You're going to want to take Aftershock, Fonts of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. Remember that Zac's E has a ton of range and you can gank from a ton of different angles. Don't forget to go after your healing bloblets, as these will let you tank even more. Not to mention, they lower the cooldown of your W every time you pick one up, and it'll let you pump out more damage. Now let's take a bit of a leap down to the bottom side of the map, starting with AD Carry. Senna has been wrecking for several patches now, and she isn't showing any signs of slowing down. You'll be looking to take Glacial Augment, Magical Footwear, Biscuits, Approach Velocity, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. This lets you abuse her long range, using the Glacial Augment to slow people down and root them. You can also even tag them with your Q at a long range and also apply the Glacial Augment that way. This combo of long range slow and snares makes her really powerful. And we haven't even mentioned her really high damage, shielding, and healing. The response to Senna has actually been Misfortune. Misfortune has been doing really well this patch, even more so than Senna. When playing Misfortune, you're going to want to take Press the Attack, Overheal, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Nimbus Cloak, and Gathering Storm. 
being an immobile champion who really only has movement speed, having overheal and bloodline for that extra healing and shielding really helps out. And Nimbus Cloak for even more movement speed doesn't hurt either. When fighting, remember that your W will reactivate your passive movement speed to its maximum. Be careful when using this. You have to trade between wanting it for the attack speed or wanting it for the mobility. Next up on our list is Aphelios. Now you might not be surprised about this one, but this champ is crazy. He has so many insane combos and tools that he is by far one of the best AD carries on the patch right now. Don't let his win rate around 50% fool you. People are still not comfortable on him, nor have they figured out every single thing possible that he can do. Oh yeah, and let's not forget that he has almost 70% ban rate. What is pretty clear though, are the runes that you're going to want to take. You're going to want Press the Attack, Overheal, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, and Biscuits. This will help you get through the early laning as an immobile champion similar to Misfortune, and the lifesteal will really start adding up in the late game. Next up for AD carries is Ash. In response to these immobile champions like Misfortune and Aphelios, Ash has been doing really well lately. Her heavy slows really cripple these kinds of champions and allow her to lane and fight them really effectively. For runes, you want to take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, and Approach Velocity. Much like Olaf, Ash can chain her slows really, really well. With this, you can easily run anybody down, even if they have Flash. Rounding out the 80 carry roster is Jin. Jin has been doing quite well lately. You're going to want to take Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Nimbus Cloak, and Gathering Storm. Presence of Mind has removed his need for relying on Essence Reaver for mana. Considering that a lot of the top 80 carries are immobile right now, Jin has no problem landing his skill shots. With these and several other smaller factors, he finds his way into our top 5. Last but certainly not least are our supports. First one up is Nautilus. For Nautilus, you want to be taking Aftershock, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Perfect Timing, and Minion Dematerializer. Remember, if you ever want to heal your AD carry, you can use your Minion Dematerializer along with the Targon's proc to heal them from long range. The extra tankiness added from Shield Bash and the extra damage allows you to take trades really effectively. Don't be afraid to use your ultimate to start off a fight. You can easily chain it into a hook if you use it properly. Just be on the lookout for the enemy tanks. Sometimes it's not the best idea to hook them towards your team. Next up is Leona. Leona fills a similar role to Nautilus in the sense that they're both tanks and engagers. Leona, however, is even more tanky as the subtractive reduction from her W makes her almost impossible to kill. For Leona, you want to be taking Aftershock, Demolish, Bone Plating, Unflinching, Perfect Timing, and Minion Dematerializer. You can still do that trick that I mentioned with Nautilus, where you use the Dematerializer with your Targon's proc to heal from range. When engaging as Leona, you can also flash on your opponent first, stun them with your Q, and then E right as the stun is going to stop. This will catch them and follow them on their flash. Shortly afterwards, you can follow up with another stun as you're gonna be in melee range of them. Next up is Nami, and she actually got a huge change on the patch. Her E now applies on abilities as well, and this makes her damage even faster than it was before. She doesn't just synergize super hard with Lucian now, but with other AD carries as well. Even beyond that, you could play her with mages too, like Heimerdinger or Swain. For runes, you want to be taking Airy, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, Scorch, Magical Footwear, and Biscuits. When you're laning as Nami, don't be afraid to use your E on yourself. Sometimes your AD carry just can't get in position to auto attack or use abilities with it. It's better used on you than not used at all. Next up is Soraka. For Soraka, you want to be taking Airy, Mana Flow, Absolute Focus, Scorch, Biscuits, and Time Warp Tonic. Some of these might seem a little strange, but with all the changes to Soraka and her regen, she actually is really healthy most of the time. Remember that your W gets empowered after you hit your Q. You can smack somebody with a Starfall, and then run away to heal your ally and give them the same regen and movement speed. Remember that this doesn't apply to your R, even though it seems like it would. Last up is Bard. Bard actually does a surprising amount of damage, and you can amplify this with your runes. You're going to want to take Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, Relentless Hunter, Manifold Band, and Celerity. This will give you a ton of roaming potential to go pick up chimes and gank other lanes. Or you can even come back around and gank your own lane. Bard is also great with immobile AD carries because of the healing and movement speed that he can provide. He also has stuns to combo with some skill shots. With those 25 champions, that's it for our list. To learn more about how to play as or against these champions, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. Even if you aren't looking for champion guides, we also have tons of other guides on lane specifics and generic skills. Everything that we do is done by challenger level players. 
We're always looking to make more videos, so make sure to let us know what you guys want to see next. That way, we can give you the best edge for your Season 10 ranked games. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. As always, my name is Ace Windstorm, and I will see you guys later.